For at TV, the world is thinking. Our guest is Dr. Imad Mustafa, Ambassador of Syria to the United States, who is discussing his country's view of the U.S. and the prospects for peace in the Middle East. Several questions about the recent Israeli attack on an alleged nuclear facility in Syria. Could you comment on it? Okay. <laughs> This is an, an extraordinary story that really needs to, to, to be discussed. Um, oh, excuse me. And by the way, uh, some of the question is I wanted to know about the seemingly rapid cleanup of the site, which seemed to hinder international judgments about what was really going on there. Well, there are two different stories. So let us compartmentalize. One story has to do with the actual raid that took place a couple of months ago on Syria. Three Israeli jet fighters hmm, penetrated deep into the Syrian airspace and bombarded a military target in Syria. By the way, those uh, three jet fighters were US made. What I'm trying to tell you is, this has happened. Nobody is denying this. Syria was the country to announce it. We were the first to announce it to the world. Israel has penetrated and provoked our airspace and bombarded a Syrian military target. Israel itself, go and verify this, never claimed that those were nuclear installations. For a simple reason, they know, and the Bush administration exactly know, that there are no nuclear installations in Syria. Syria has never attempted in the past to acquire nuclear technology. It is not attempting right now to acquire nuclear technology, and we do not plan to acquire nuclear technology in the foreseeable future. We have seen what has happened to Iraq, despite the fact that Iraq never had WMDs. We do not plan to allow our enemies, and they are formidable enemies, to use such a pretext to bring freedom, democracy, and prosperity to Syria in a way similar to what has happened to Iraq. So the story is absolutely, absolutely untrue. What happened in that raid? They attacked a military installation in Syria. This is not the first time Israel does this. It's, and it might not be the last time. It's one incident in a very long series of military minor and major clashes between Syria and Israel. Two years ago, they also at attacked a, 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 a Palestinian camp in Syria. And it might happen again. I'm, 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 I'm not belittling this incident. It is damaging. It is very damaging the, to the peace prospects between Syria and Israel. But theoretically speaking, it's so easy to take place. You have to remember the, the ceasefire line between Israel and Syria is only 30 miles away from Damascus, the capital city of Syria. It's so easy for any Israeli jet fighter at any given moment to penetrate the Syrian airspace. And the same applies to us. It's so easy for any Syrian missile at any given moment to attack any Israeli city. But I don't think we plan to do this. And probably the Israelis deliberately chose, probably because we cannot understand exactly what they were thinking of, deliberately chose a, a, a military target of very minor significance so that it will not uh, provoke a new war between Syria and Israel. Of course, it has done a lot of damage to other issues, but this is not the discussion. Now, let us, as I said, compartmentalize, forget about what has happened between Syria and Israel. It will enter the history of the Syrian-Israeli uh, conflict as a minor footnote. The extraordinary thing happened here in the United States, and this is really something. Suddenly, every other day in the Washington Post and the New York Times, you would read a story about the North Korean Syrian nuclear cooperation in Syria and how Syria is building nuclear facilities in, in, in the Syrian territories and how Israel conducted this preemptive strike to prevent Syria from building a nuclear bomb. Every other day you will have such a story. Of course, the Washington Post and the New York Times will try to give themselves the appearance of being objective and careful. So after printing this whole story of the Syrian nuclear project, they will always add some qualifiers by the very end. 
quoting some experts who would say, really, there is no proof whatsoever about any nuclear technology in Syria. Nobody has ever heard before that Syria has nuclear technology. And this target can be any target. It's just a building, just a building. And all the photos, it's a, a, such a silly hype. All the photos, they, are, they were available on Google Earth and on other commercially available satellite taken images, is, are photos of a building, nothing else. Not even a building that resembles that of a nuclear reactor. And most importantly, only a week ago, the New York Times published a story saying that those photos of this building have been captured first in 2003 by a commercial, a commercial US satellite service. So suddenly, four years later, Israel and the United States wake up and say, wow, this is a Syrian nuclear facility. Let us go and attack it. Uh, um, I wrote a letter to the editor of the New York Times, and it was not published, telling the New York Times, isn't that something? You are being Judith Millard for the second time within five years? <laughs> you have published all those silly stories about the Iraqi WMDs, and you never learned your lesson? Can't, don't you think about the reputation of such an establishment like the New York Times? And that's it. You just take those stories from the White House, and you just publish them like this without even trying, trying to corroborate those stories? In short, because I know we are running out of time, there is definitely and absolutely no nuclear project in Syria. We understand, we understand that we do not live in a fair world. We understand that the United States has double standards. And we know very well, we are realists, that if Syria will attempt to acquire nuclear technology, attempt, then the gates of hell will open on Syria. We have seen what has happened to Iraq. Thank you very much. Oh.